Let's talk a little bit about what developmental psychology is and exactly what it studies. And what it is, in case you need a proper definition, is the study of continuity and change across the lifespan across different dimensions. But what that actually means is that it's the study of change over time. And what sorts of things are we talking about when we talk about change? Well, we're talking about physical changes or cognitive changes, but also things like personality and intelligence, and even how our understanding of morality changes over time. And it tends to ask questions that span the lifetime. Things like how different parenting styles can affect people years down the line when they're adults. How a child's relationship with their parents or peer groups changes over time. Even things like how and why we stop believing in Santa Claus. All of these things fall under developmental psychology. It really spans all of the other psychological disciplines simply by looking at how they change. And another term that you may have heard of before is child psychology. And child psychology certainly falls underneath the umbrella term of developmental psychology. But child psychology specifically looks at how children change across different dimensions, as opposed to developmental psych more broadly, which looks at the entire lifespan, so everything from birth all the way to old age. And if it seems like the topic of developmental psychology is extremely broad, well, it is. But there are a couple of things that developmental researchers typically focus on, and this is by no means a comprehensive list, but it might give you a, a pretty good understanding. And the first is, uh, is motor skills. So things like, how do we go from crawling to walking? How do young children learn how to grasp things? How does coordination change over our lifespan? It also looks at social changes over time. Things like, how do we interact with our society and our peers and our family? And how do we come to understand that other people have minds and thoughts and beliefs that are different from our own? We also have cognitive development, and this looks at how our thinking changes over time. So how do we come to think about and understand the world around us? How do we learn how to interpret different cues in our visual field? And even things like, how do we come to understand addition? How does that skill develop? Lastly, and I'm going to put a little star next to this one, which I'll explain in a moment, but we look at how linguistic skills changes over time. So we look at how language develops. And I put a little star next to that because I kind of feel like maybe linguistics falls underneath the cognitive umbrella, but it also gets a lot of focus all on its own. So for the moment, I've chose to sort of list it as a separate item, but know that it could be included in cognitive. And when we're thinking about developmental psychology, there are three main things to keep in mind. And these aren't really rules or laws, more like underlying principles that you'll sort of need to keep in mind as you learn about this topic. And the first one is that development is growth. And what do I mean by that? I mean that we don't typically lose skills after we gain them, not unless something actually goes wrong. When we're talking about development, we usually talk about building on things that we already have. The second thing to keep in mind is the nature-nurture interaction. And by this I mean that development is the result of both heredity and the environment working together to make us who we are. The last thing we have, or the last expectation, is that development is going to move in an orderly progression. Kids don't usually go from no mobility to walking. Typically, crawling comes in between. And similarly, we don't really say sentences before we learn how to say individual words. And so when we talk about orderly progression, what we're actually saying is that development follows a basic sequence. And I want to note right now before we go any further that the timing of that sequence, exactly when things develop, is a lot less important than the sequence itself. We also say that it's orderly because of maturation, which are kind of the genetic and biological instructions that cause different body and mental functions to, to appear when they do. It causes them to appear in a certain sequence. And you might think that that violates the, the nature-nurture point that I made just a moment ago. But what we're actually saying is that maturation tends to set the basic course of development, which is then adjusted by our different environment and experience.